there, Kristen here with another Roll20 tutorial. This video will discuss three methods Roll20 has to allow a game master to hide or reveal tabletop elements from their players. These features being the GM layer, fog of war, and dynamic lighting. The GM layer is pretty straightforward fare. This is a layer that only the game master can see. You can quickly move to the GM layer by using the keyboard command Ctrl K on the PC or Command K if you're on a Mac. You can also access the GM layer by selecting it from the list of layers from the tabletop toolbox. You can secretly add images, tokens, doodles, and text just like any of the other layers available. Any content that's placed on the GM layer will have a translucent opacity, so you'll always retain a clear view of the player visible items on the tabletop. To switch images to this layer, First, right-click on the item to bring up the Options pop-up menu, and from there, select the Layers option and then the GM layer. What's really convenient about this is that not only is the GM layer a great place to store monsters away secretly, but you can also leave all your fiendish campaign notes directly on the tabletop with no one else the wiser. It certainly adds that extra level of entertainment for the conniving Game Master to see imminent disaster literally hanging above the oblivious heroes. The Fog of War adds a black opaque filter over the entire tabletop. When the GM wants to reveal an area for the PCs to see, he or she manually sweeps the area to make it visible to all the players. To activate Fog of War, you first need to toggle it on in the Page Settings. Click on the Page icon at the top of the screen to pull down the Page toolbar. Then click on the gear icon on the page that you wish to add Fog of War to. This opens a new window for that page's settings. Check off Fog of War to activate it. Further down is a slider for GM opacity. As the GM, you can see through Fog of War or dynamic lighting. This slider makes the visibility effects more or less translucent. At its default position, the GM should be able to see the fog, but not at the expense of losing sight of the rest of the map. You can fiddle with this to match your preference. Once Fog of War is activated, the fog will cover the entire tabletop. In order for your PCs to see, you'll need to sweep away some of that fog. You do this by clicking on the Fog of War tool, which is represented by the eye icon on the tabletop toolbox. You're given two drawing sub-tools under Fog of War, Reveal Areas or Hide Areas. All you have to do is select one of these drawing tools and drag out rectangles over what you want your PCs to see or not see. If you reveal or hide an unintended area, you can fill it back in again by going back to the Fog of War tool and choosing the opposite sweep type. If at any point you would like to see a player's view of the tabletop to check your work, go to the My Settings tab on the sidebar and scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on the Rejoin as Player button. This will reload the campaign and run Roll20 under Player Mode. To return to GM mode, go back to the My Settings tab and click on the Rejoin as GM button. Dynamic lighting is a feature presently only available to Roll20's mentor and subscriber members. This system is similar to Fog of War, where the big difference between the two is that the hiding and revealing is automatically factored and drawn for you. The Game Master places tokens on the tabletop that emit light and draws walls to block line of sight, and Roll20 calculates the shadows cast. Activating dynamic lighting is treated exactly the same way as Fog of War. You toggle it on within the page settings. Since dynamic lighting can be browser intensive, if you expect that some of your players might have trouble due to either a slow connection or a slow computer, you can help tone down the processing power by checking off the only update on drop option. What this does is that the dynamic lighting will become static and will only update if a light emitting token is picked up and placed somewhere else. It won't process the lighting configuration while you're dragging it around the tabletop. Once dynamic lighting is turned on, you'll notice that the tabletop will get dim. Presently, there isn't anything casting light on the tabletop. Your players are essentially looking at a black screen right now. So why don't we add some light sources to our scene? Tokens are our vehicle for light. Under a token settings is an input box for emits light. To cast light, 
just enter a number of units into the input box. It's important to note that if you want to remove light from a token later on, you need to null the input box since the value of zero creates an orb of light just big enough to encompass the token's perimeter. For PC tokens, treat this field as their line of sight rather than light cast. Well, unless your PC is literally on fire or is naturally phosphorescent. There's a checkbox to the right of the emits light input box. When checked, all players can see the light being emitted. If it's left unchecked, the only people who can see the light are the GM and whoever has permission to control that particular token. If the token's a torch or a light bulb, you'll probably want to check this box. PC tokens are probably best left with this option unchecked, so each player can only see their own line of sight. So now we have light. Let's draw some walls to block it. On the tabletop toolbox, we'll want to select a dynamic lighting layer. Whatever gets drawn on this layer will block light. You can utilize all of your normal drawing tools to draft walls with the single exception of circles. Circles render unexpected results because there isn't enough segment information to work with. You'll get much better results drawing a rounded polygon in the place of a circle. I'd recommend using different colors to differentiate between permanent structures and light blocks that you'll need to move, like doors. You can also add notes with the text tool safely here as they don't block light. Don't worry if your final wall map makes your tabletop look like a psychotic mess when you're done. The minute you switch to another layer, everything on the dynamic lighting layer is hidden from view. If you use the keyboard shortcut Control or Command L while light emitting token is selected, the dynamic lighting will display only that token's light source. You can use this to check a player's line of sight on an individual basis. To return back to the default lighting display, just click elsewhere on the tabletop or hit the Escape key. As you might have noticed over the course of this video, is that each of these features have their own drawbacks. The GM layer can hide your monsters and notes from view, but the players will still get a good view of the entire tabletop. The Fog of War requires a lot of upkeep while playing a game, and it's hard to sweep really refined areas. And there's nothing preventing a player from plopping their token in an area they're not supposed to be in yet to lift the dynamic lighting and reveal your scary dragon den before that encounter is supposed to go down. Here's a recommendation. Keep your monsters and traps in the GM layer until the players move to that area on the tabletop, and sweep some fog over unexplored regions while dynamic lighting's on to prevent any premature reveals. In conclusion, using all three of these features in tandem will ensure that the element of surprise remains wholly intact for your players. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Check out our YouTube channel for more Roll20 tutorials, and as always, you can read our help documentation over at help.roll20.net. If you have any further questions on how to use our virtual tabletop, visit the official Roll20 forums. Happy gaming!